Hey everyone. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, today was a cleaning day. Um, I took care of mopping and cleaning the entire floor and making it look nice. Um, and it's just been one of those days where it was supposed to be a rest day, which it was a rest day, but it was also a working rest day. So my morning started with um, I wanted to sleep in till noon and God had other plans. He nudged me out of bed at 10 o'clock. Like, it's time to get up. Come on. So I made my coffee and had a couple of cups and I made breakfast. And then he nudged me that I needed to go do laundry. Like I said in the previous video that I just recorded last night, um, <laughs> I had a jug of hot sauce, hot wing sauce fall on my head and I actually when I touch right here I can feel the pain I don't see a bruise but I can feel the pain because when I was taking a bath I was like why does my head hurt and then I remember <laughs> the jug that hit me in the head well my shoes were covered in hot sauce and um, God didn't want me letting my dog lick up the sauce on my feet on my shoes so he had me leave them in the in the bathroom so I took that and I took my slippers and I put them all in the washer and got everything washed so it's everything's clean and the floor looks pretty dang good actually and so God has been showing me several things over the course of the last month um, it's been longer, so periodically he'll show me, um, like flying, or he'll show me the word fly, and I know what it means, get ready, you're about to soar, and when you know you're getting closer, because the words start coming faster and more often, and you see them everywhere. Um, the billboards, you see them on buildings, you see them on people's shirts, you see them on advertisements, you see them on the TV, you see them... Um, watching a commercial about a rocket taking off and the internet and connection. And today... Turn it down a little bit. Some of you have been asking why I always have the TV on when I'm making these videos. And ask God. He's the one that says, turn on TV, turn on the light, turn off the light. Um, I do what he asks. And it's not wine. It is actually um, a carbonated water with peach flavor. I was at Walmart uh, last week and this girl was doing, um, uh, she was offering trial tastes, tests, and I tried that particular water. It's a Walmart brand, it was like 75 cents. And I bought this one, and I bought I bought one that was black cherry, and I didn't like the black cherry, so I'm definitely going to be buying the peach one again, um, maybe three or four bottles. But anyway, <laughs> um, so God has had me on the phone all day, and. Then suddenly he'd be like, okay, put it down. Go do this. 
and I'd go do that, and then I'd come back, and then there'd be a word that he wanted me to listen to. Um, I only address the things that God puts in my heart to address. And like yesterday, he had me address the fact that he's been putting it on someone's heart to sow a seed. But they are in disbelief. They're being, in their disbelief and their unfaithfulness, they are being disobedient. And you'll know it's you because your heart will start to patter faster. You're, you'll start to feel heat. You'll start to feel sweat. And that's the Holy Spirit trying to unction you to move forward with what you're being, t with what you have, the feeling that you have. Um, everybody gets different things. Everybody gets similar things. And I know it sounds like an, ox like an oxymoron, but you have to understand the way God talks to you in order for you to understand when you're being pulled by the Holy Spirit. And I was, I've been in and out of different words, in and out of different things. And I know there is some of you that are questioning my subscribership, um, the places that I'm subscribed to, the prophets that I listen to. And all I can tell you is, ask God. I don't limit God to how he wants to lead me. Sometimes it's because he needs me to pray over the individual. Sometimes it's because he is going to give that individual a word that I need to listen to. Sometimes there are words that I am putting out or will be putting out that are going to impact that individual. Remember that when God sends us to someone or gives us a word that is for someone and we do not obey and we do not share the word, we do not put out the word, we do not open our mouths, their blood is on our hands. So to ensure that I am always doing what God wants, to ensure that I am always aligned with God, regardless of whether or not I understand why he's got me going the way I'm going, I trust in him. I trust in what he's leading me in because he will lead me according to his will, according to his plan. I do not understand his ways, but he is all-encompassing. I don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow takes care of itself. I worry about today because today has already been given to me. I don't worry about the past because I cannot change the past. I do not look back for I am not Lot's wife. I will not turn into a pillar of salt. But I do not submit to the world because I am the salt that does not allow others to feel at ease because my presence bothers them, because God is within me, and my God affects the spirits over them. So, the words that I've been reading today, he's had me in the Bible, and he's had me listening to prophetic words, and oh my goodness, every time he showed me a new word, it just blew my mind. It did, it blew my mind. So we started the morning with Psalm 105, verses 1 through 45. And it was regarding God's wonders, the works of his wonders, and his promise of the covenant and our inheritance. 
on Sunday. No. On Saturday, when I was on my way to work, God showed me the number 222. My phone number has 222 in it. So he had me write that down. That's what I've been doing today. Studying, working, cleaning, resting. And he showed me a song by Hilary Duff called Fly. But he had me look it up. He showed me the video and he said, no, look up the lyrics to this song. I said, okay. And then he had me write down the, the verses that he highlighted or that it, it's highlighted, but it, it's, it's like I was drawn to those words. And it talks about opening up the parts of you that you want to hide. In a moment, everything can change. And then he brought me another song, but he didn't have me listen to it. He just had me read the words, she's no you. And I was like, Okay. And then he's been showing me the return of the king. And then he took me to Genesis. So in Genesis, um, what was it? Uh, 818, I think it was. Genesis. Genesis. Oh, is this Genesis 18? Eight. It was the passage where he talks about the, the coming blessings, the coming inheritance. And God had led me to, so this was a while back. This was still in December. There were two $2 bills in the cash register. And God led me to asked the manager if I could exchange dollar bills for the two dollars, the two two dollar bills that were in the register. And the manager said, sure. I was like, okay. So I got two of them. And then on another day, there was another two dollar bill. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so he had me purchase the second $2 bill. And you can see them here. I have three $2 bills. And God had me put them into the Bible. And today, he had me look where I had the money. And then he said, but I want you in Genesis 2.22. And when I changed over to 222, there was a quarter. I didn't put a quarter in my Bible. <laughs> and the number 25 means God's love. But it also is the number seven, perfect completion. And he had me put the three $2 bills and the 25 cents together. 
that number also happens to be the number six. I don't know why he had me share that. But anyway, so then he took me to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 9 through 22, to 23. And in that, he brought me back to a dream that I had had last year regarding my assignment, regarding where I'm going next. My assignment is going to send me into areas that are volatile, to areas where the stronghold of the enemy is protected by guns. And I am not afraid because I know that God has gone before me. And this is God's battle, not mine. But I will go where he sends me. And as I read the chapter, I knew that this was all in preparation for my next assignment. I already knew that I was going to be going into places that seem unwelcoming. I mean, if you think about it, God has been preparing me for this next assignment. Losing my truck, I am now vulnerable to the world. I walk among the homeless, among the drug addicts. I am a woman alone on the streets at night with nothing but my father in my heart. Nothing but the words that he has put in my mouth to ensure that I stay strong. I'm on the streets where homeless men and women who are desperate, who don't know where their next meal is coming from. And I don't judge them. I don't fear them. They actually say hi. They talk to me. I talk to them. And I tell them God loves them. That they just need to call his name and he will help them out of the situation that they're in. Some take heed of those words. Others shy away from me. They're afraid that I will be like the others and I will push them away from me and I will belittle them. But God says, just show them love. Show them kindness. Show them patience. Then he brought me to Isaiah chapters 62 through 63. And he reminded me of what he's been telling me. that my covenant of marriage is going to be fulfilled for I cannot go forward in my next assignment without my husband's protection because where there is two in agreement then God is among them and I will need the support and the leading of my husband 
to walk forward. If you do not understand, I would suggest asking God. And he's been showing me watchmen. More specifically, the marksmen. The marksmen do not miss. They can hit a hair from a hundred feet away. And it is because our prayers are so precise. God has been training us to pray in a specific way. And then after Isaiah chapter 62 and 63, God had me listen to a word from Tara regarding the dove. And there are things that he is showing me that I can't yet talk about. And the confirmation that her teachings are providing me are phenomenal. Because you see, when you walk with God and he first has you alone, and you think, because Lucifer is good at manipulation. He's good at deceiving you. And before coming across Tara and some of the others that God has highlighted to me are part of my tribe, are part of the group of people that I will have with me into the next. There would be moments where Lucifer would make me think that I didn't hear God, that I was hallucinating, that I was making it all up in my head, that I was going crazy. The woman that raised me said I was crazy, say that I wasn't smart enough to be anything. And she would tell people, if Diana can do it, anybody can, because she's not that smart. God has worked so diligently on me to remove all of that fear, all of that doubt, all of that. <sighs> all of the um, hesitation. And when he brought me just Emily, and she began to talk about things that God had been talking to me about since I was a child, I realized that I wasn't going crazy, that I do hear from God, that I do have the ability to understand what God is asking me to do, that I am not alone, that he does have me, that I am his. But now that he's brought me Tara, it is like a whole nother level of understanding, a whole nother level of belief. Not because of the words that she is putting out and not because she's the one doing it. It's because I recognize my father's hand. You see, I am beginning to recognize my father's hand in everything. For example, I have been watching this show, Bobby Flay, Beat Bobby Flay. It's a cooking show for those that are like fanatics for cooking. I love cooking. God has been putting it on my heart that I'm going to be a phenomenal cook. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So he has me watching these shows to get ideas, to get techniques, to... Because I am a visual learner, I can imitate everything that I'm seeing on TV. 
I can hear it, but it's not the same. But when I see it done, I can do it too. And that is God's work right there. Well, I have been watching this show, Bobby, Beat Bobby Flay, pretty much almost since it started. And I just noticed in this year's episodes that there is what they consider to be an X on the floor, meaning X marks the spot, because it's a competition. First, two competitors go against each other, and then the winner goes against Bobby Flay. But the way they showed the X on TV, I was like, why is there a cross on the floor? And God said, because he is mine. And I was like, okay, what else is yours? And then I began to see the relationship between Taylor Swift and Travis Kels. That is God's doing. The relationship between Selena Gomez and Benny, that is God. And I was just like, floored. This is all revelation I'm getting today. That this is all God. God, God, God. And I'm going, I mean, I, I had an idea. I had a, and he goes, why do you think these things are happening? And I said, because you're about to turn the world upside down. You're about to put everyone on their butts. Because you're about to show up in such a way that no one will be able to say it isn't God. And I just... And then listening to Tara. And as I'm watching her, the video where she wrote B, B, D, T, 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 N, D. And she's about to start writing. I'm like, B. Um, now I can't remember. <laughs> now that I'm trying. He said write it down and I didn't. Um, B. Beloved? No. As he was giving me the words before she wrote them down. And I was just like, Okay. <laughs> and then he showed me other things. And there are other things that I have confirmation of. But again, it is not time yet. It is not time yet. So, of course, he directed me to Genesis 2.22. And then, because I found the 25 cents, and then he had me, he said, add the six. And then he goes... Remember how I used to show you the, the, the Bible verses that I wanted you to read? And I was like, I would put them in Google search, and then you would bring up those, and it would resonate. And so yeah, I did that. I went to Google, and I typed in Bible verse 6, 20, uh, chapter 6, verse 25. And he brought me to Matthew. And I was like, what? Matthew 6.25. Okay. And then he goes, go to your pictures. Because I sometimes I will take screenshots of words that God will want me to go to later. Because in that moment, I don't understand what it is that he's trying to put together for me. Because sometimes it's for a later time, not for now. And there is a young girl I follow. Her name is Salt 144. And in that passage, she talks about Ephesians 3.20. And so I went to 3.20. And it was just, it floored me. Because these are all... 
it, this is a culmination of all the things that God has been showing me. And if you go all the way back to the beginning, when I first started doing videos, I was living in an apartment. My space was my room, basically. And my roommate, at first, wasn't home ever. And then, towards the end, and this is before I told him that I was moving out, towards the end, he started being around more and more. And God started to give me this sensation that this young man was going to try and hook up with me. Now, he's a much younger man, and he was in his 30s. I was in my, it was probably 47. I was 47 at the time. So I'm not into dating younger men, mostly men that are my kids' age, no. And I've always asked God not to have me date a much younger man. So when the man that God has for me comes into my life, I already know he's younger. Because <laughs> he's not that much younger, but he's younger. And I'm okay with the difference in age. But there are certain things that I ask for in his appearance. And <laughs> he's letting them happen. He's in agreement. He likes it. Not having to take care of the upkeep of all the stuff that he used to do. And being liked for who he is. For his naturalness. And... Uh, I, so today was one of those look back days. And as I was thinking about when I was living in that apartment, I remember I was living in the apartment, but I was basically in one room. I didn't have a bed, and I was sleeping on the floor. I had a mat that I had bought. So I was sleeping technically on the floor. And you can go back through the videos and you'll hear me talk about stuff like that. And, you know, I remember feeling like these four walls was all I had. Because when he was in the house, I didn't like going into the kitchen because he was in the kitchen.